Good afternoon, everybody. Um, just want to welcome everyone to Metro Space School webinar series. Today we're going to be focused on the topic of pizza. Um, it's becoming a growing trend, especially with all the takeout and delivery. It's one of the easiest items to do that with. Um, so we want to make sure we bring everyone up to date on our solutions that help keep you up with the demand on the um, pizza itself, as well as how you're going to store, store, hold and serve that. Um, and make sure you're as profitable as possible while you're doing all of that. So today um, we'll be coming to you live and presenting today will be uh, myself, Nancy Farah, Mrs. Chismo, uh, Janet Zimmerman, the pizza princess, and Lauren Narika, the pizza gangsta. So we're gonna let Lauren take it away from here and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Great, thanks Nancy. Um, I don't know about you, but when I think Friday night takeout, I think pizza. And so it's no surprise that pizza tops the charts as the number one go-to option during COVID. Um, for years, pizza concepts have been mastering the art of to-go and delivery. And so they've honestly been well positioned for the changes in the market. Um, when COVID impacted the dine-in segment, pizza sales actually, actually soared. And even with restrictions going back and forth, um, two thirds of the pizza business is takeout and delivery and pizza concepts have enjoyed 42% higher sales during COVID, which we know is not the norm for other concepts. When we take a look at the year over year change and share of restaurant visits, pizza outpaces other segments such as fast casual, quick serve and casual dining, and it's not going unnoticed. Over the last couple of months, I'm sure you've seen some advertising for multiple concepts that are entering into the pizza uh, space. So from restaurant chains like Panera and Red Robin to the sea store segment and sea store segment and grocery segment, um, everyone kind of wants a piece of the pie with a growing off premise dining segment and pizza is a large part of that. So with more concepts entering the space and current uh, concepts bombarded with orders, the key to keeping up with demand is really understanding the process. So from receiving um, to proofing, prep to cook, and let's not forget about preparing all of those boxes and then storing stacks of prepared pizzas, getting ready to be consumed, Metro does have a solution for every step along the way. So I'm going to pass it over to Miss Janet to walk through some of those solutions with you. Thanks, Lauren. As she outlined, it's very important for you to understand the process that your customer goes through to make that pizza. So let's start at the beginning with the proofing process. And this is where you allow the dough to rise. So in the back there that they will definitely need a prepping station there so that they can put the dough into pans and then put it on a cart or into the proofing cabinet. Well, we have solutions for both of those. We have a prep station, the CR2448 AIO in the system with all the grid accessories that you see. Likewise, the C539 cabinet with the combo module can be used for proofing in the morning and then holding in the afternoon. So we have that covered so far. So then after the proofing process, what happens? You need to stop that process and that's done by putting the dough into the cooler. And on the left hand side, you see an example of this customer uses a dough cart, puts the pans on a cart and rolls it into a large proofing cabinet and then comes into the cooler to stop the process and offloads it onto shelves. What I like about our solutions on the right hand side, the docking station, is that those racks can be used for every step. They can be used for the proofing and then rolled into the cooler to stop the proofing, then rolled out to the cook station. So this is a really good use of floor space and no one has to lift any heavy pans off of one cart and onto shelves. So let's take a look then at the cook process. On the right hand side is a flow chart of where you bring the uh, rack out of the cooler over to the make table and then you can just slide it along and add the toppings that your customer wants and then into the oven it goes. On the left hand side is a small footprint that we developed using Smart Lever. 
and this flows right to left. On the right hand side is a small make table that the toppings are added to the pizza and it goes in the conveyor oven and exits on the left hand side. That small cart underneath the work surface can be pulled out and you can cut on that and place the pizza into a box. So then let's go and see after the pizza is cooked what happens. So imagine that there's a large conveyor oven on the left hand side of both of these uh, situations. So the pizza comes out of the oven and the hot pan gets put onto the work surface. The pizza gets pulled out of the pan, cut and then put into boxing. The boxes are a really key component of everything and can really stop the whole process. This can be a real bottleneck on a Friday afternoon or a Friday evening. So we really looked at how the boxes are stored and how we can make this whole process flow faster and with, with a lot less motion. So let's take a look at the boxes. The boxes are a pain to any pizza location. They come in flat, like on the left-hand side, and throughout the day, the employees start folding the boxes and they put them wherever there is space available. So we recognized also on the cut table area that the boxes was a two hand operation. You'd have to stretch to pull down the box, then open it, get the pizza in. So we just simply de developed these tall dividers that are in essence gravity fed. You pull the box out from the bottom with one hand, flip it open, put the pizza in and off you go. So then let's look at where that pizza goes and it goes to the holding area. Again, the C539 can be used for that holding operation in the afternoon, but the new hot shelves are a great addition, particularly for a pizza operation. They can be either counter, put on the counter, integrate it into your workstations or your prep stations, and then also develop into a to-go station itself. So, Please don't forget about all those dirty pans that are accumulating around. So we developed uh, some quick solutions. And on the left-hand side, you'll see that these pans are perforated. Those pans hold a lot of water. So we recognized that they had to be on an angle in order for that water to es escape. So likewise, we developed a 24 by 36 cart, simply a super recta cart and using the pan drying racks from Metro Max line. These fit on any 24 inch deep shelves, but also keep in mind that we have a tray drying rack in smart wall and this can be used for a lot of lid stories and storage and take some pressure off of the pan storage area. That's basically the steps and now we're going to see the video of why not Italian. And something that I wanted to just bring up, I reviewed episode two, the assessment a few times and it is well done. And it really goes through the whole process of the customer's business and how we can have solutions for every step of the way. So let's watch the video. really really late last night got in started working on the walk-in cooler they had a big delivery coming in the morning again this restaurant is not closing started late last night we're up at the crack of dawn everyone's already exhausted we got a lot of things great things happening stay tuned don't miss a beat of this video good stuff all along the way Today's day two and our heated shelves have arrived. So they're really great for what you see here for staging uh, pickup or delivery meals. Uh, what's really unique about this system is we can put these shelves wherever we want to and create different configurations. So it could just be a whole rack of shelving. You can see here we've got the overhead uh, heated, heated shelves 
that are keeping food hot before they, they put them in these bags and, uh, and get ready for delivery. You could do this for takeout as well, you know, if you want to hold uh, anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes. Let's go in the cooler. These are nice. So a cornerstone of why not Italian is their pizza. And these are the dough tin carts that we built for them out of our Super Active Pro structure. By removing the mats, we had built-in channels which enabled us to create slots for their dough tin. We're live again here at the Kitchen Storage Makeover. Um, it's day two. Uh, it's really beating us up today. It's a very, very difficult installation. It's a very difficult space to work around. There's not a lot of space, so every space has to be multi-purpose. Uh, and this is going to be one of the big changes. And it's interesting how high we're, where we have to go. I mean, it's not the most accessible stuff, but as you can see, in a small space, you need to use every inch. Rods and tabs make easy separation between different sleeves of cups and lids. In corners, we like to S-hook so we can avoid a post and have easy access to the back corner of the shelves. Oh. <laughs> so I'm staying with the delivery and staging area, which the delivery area is right over there, staging a little bit right here. And now right here, we've got them some more food storage capacity. This is where they come to get all their stuff for chopped salads, pastas down here, far more organized now. Cups over here, and then the delivery boxes are over here. <laughs> Smart wall is an easy way to maximize vertical space on the wall. So here we have two different shelving units, and we also have a wall grid where we can put on different accessories such as baskets, prong hooks, and over here we have different containers that we can separate with dividers. So, Tony, we, we've made it through just about the whole installation. Tell me a little bit about your impressions and what you thought about it. Um, and, you know, the end result is amazing, you know, it's been a craziness, you know, being doing this while we were open, uh, you know, but it's been a lot of fun. And seeing the end result really made it worth it. What, what has been the biggest transformation? I think really just space and optimizing the space has really been awesome. You know, when you open up a restaurant, you know, you don't necessarily have the funds to be able to do all this amazing stuff when you first open because you're under budget constraints and everything like that. So but this has really made a huge impact in our restaurant. Our staff is so excited and I'm really, uh, you know, the delivery area is always a very congested area where we're shooting at the moment. And uh, the efficiencies of this area, I can't wait to see them work on a busy Friday night. And see how I, I think that, the, in, you know, from what we saw just starting, that the team, your team really likes some of the, the changes. What, they definitely what is, do. What is their impression? I think having everything at their fingertips is really critical. You know, so in the middle of a rush when you're out of something and you have to run to the back, they'll know exactly where everything is. And I think that really is a big deal for us because we're talking about saving steps here is what we're really trying to do. Well, game over. Why not Italian? We're done. Hitting the road, uh, it was a huge success. Thought it was good, never going to happen. We are professionals. Do not try this at all. We uh, we have our ride. Here comes the wing girls running me over. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, especially Lauren and Janet for providing all their expertise. Um, we are looking forward to some upcoming webinars. 
Um, the next one is going to be focused on buffets and what is going to be um, taking their place as um, so many of the concepts are transitioning um, based on the new um, regulations and operational needs that we're seeing out there. So look forward to seeing everybody December 3rd and we'll talk to you all soon. Stay safe. Thank you and have a happy holiday. Oh, and if you have any questions, um, you can always email me or um, you're always welcome to message in during the session and we'll try and get to you at the end, but it doesn't look like anyone had sent any messages in. So if you think of anything after the fact, please shoot us an email and we'll get right back to you. Thanks guys.